Last night, the Manitoba Moose took a commanding 2-0 lead in the best of seven series with two convincing victories. And now it is Charlotte's turn to try and find something to grab onto and come back and make this a series. Will the Manitoba Moose sweep or will Charlotte live to see another day? We'll find out as the Checkers and the Moose play tonight in games three and four of the best of seven Calder Cup Finals. Hi everyone, t Sibs with you. Joining me tonight, Biggie and Zeus will be the main color commentators. And we're also joined tonight by Jack Dupe who will be talking to us at least for uh, this game number three. And uh, gentlemen, again, thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, let me just uh, start with Zeus on this. Uh, you know, we've uh, talked a little bit off air about how this series went and how the playoffs have gone all season long. And, um, you know, obviously Manitoba coming off a great victory against San Jose in the semifinals. And you always wonder if there's going to be some letdown. But whew, last night, if you watch game number one, it was uh, it was brutal, and they uh, the Manitoba Moose really took it to them right away in game number one, and then game number two again all uh, all Manitoba when it came to the second half of the game it was uh, uh, you know just not a great showing last night, and uh, uh, a situation where uh, not not much that uh, Charlotte can do in, in an overpowering Manitoba team. No, you're right. Absolutely. I mean, you got to look at the checkers. They had total time on attack, five minutes and 15 seconds for both games one and two, whereas Manitoba practically doubled that time on attack in each of their games. So they're sitting at around 20 minutes to, you know, checkers five minutes. You're not going to win any hockey games, but you can't even get any kind of pressure into their zone at all. Well, the teams are together now, and so we're going to be getting this game going right away. We just got on air. Just in, time, just in time, and uh, we'll give Biggie a chance to finish up his dinner, and then we'll uh, we'll hear from him in a little bit. And of course, Jack Dupe is with us tonight for Game Three to talk about the matchups. And here we go in this one as we get the viewpoint of the Manitoba Moose, who are the away team now for the next couple of games. And very quickly, Charlotte able to get it into the Moose zone. Brian tries to flip it in behind the net. Now the checkers look to be getting it out. Good quick pass up to Alexander. Flips one on net. Arch with a good save and then a rebound save. Nice play by Arch to make a beautiful save on a wide open rebound. That now back, Charlotte. Save. Yep, I'm sorry. Yep, go ahead. <laughs> I was saying that was a quality save. That could have been a really, really big uh, opener for the game for the Checkers, but it got stopped pretty hard. Now Manitoba on the attack. Flip out front by Louie, but not able to get anything connected there. And now Charlotte back the other way. Some good defense, good poke checking. No penalties on any of that play. So good defense all around by Chanderson and Bob. Now back Brian the other way, drops it for Louie. Good quick snapshot and gets it past the blocker side of God of America. And Manitoba quickly on the board. Looks like momentum's carrying from last game into this one easily. Brian with the goal. Five forty-eight, the time of the goal, and Manitoba with the one-nothing lead. Now Charlotte trying to come back on the attack, and Manitoba able to clear it out. Puck flipped around the boards, intercepted by Boston, gets it past the outstretched stick of Bob, and now the Moose start over again. Good press there by FSC, and now Charlotte. Able to get an opportunity, but good poke check there coming back to help out Brian. Now Sessman. Brian tries to flip one on. That's blocked. Now finally out of the zone. Halfway through the first period, Manitoba with the early 1-0 lead. Boston plays it up for SFC. Rister blocked. 
Chanderson now offside as Charlie tries to get back in. Face off win for Manitoba as Chanderson shoots it in. Sessman tried to find somebody in front. No one was there. Now, good intercept there by Louie, but it comes back out again, and the checkers will start out. Good long shot pushed aside by Arch. Now back up is Manitoba. We talked yesterday about these games and how it seemed like Charlotte was not able to move the puck well. Didn't, didn't have a lot of good passing. Didn't take opportunities to dump it in a lot. Looks like they're trying to open it up a little more in this game. Well, it looks a lot better. Uh, is this what we were calling their so third line too? Because it definitely doesn't. They've probably moved the puck the best so far out of any line. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. I, you know, I guess maybe you would. I, I don't know. Uh, this is a good, this is a good line with no frills. F, SFC and Alexander up front. Whether they're the third line, I don't know. Now Brian on a partial break, backhander, saved by God of America with the glove. He'll hold, 420 left to go in the first period. I don't know, Duke, what, what, what would you call this line for Charlotte? Is this their two or three line? I'll be honest with you, I don't know. You Like looking at that whole entire team, I didn't know what their first line was, second line or third line, besides the, whatever line Skillsy was on was their first line. This to me looks like their third line, to be completely honest. I don't really see that many like outstanding guys that you should be worried about going into this game. Their center itself is negative 25. Like, come on. That, that's a joke. That's a, that's a third line of CHL right there. Well, the mixing, I mean, I mean, we saw Alexander and Customs play with uh, Skillsy in game two last night. So Alexander now jumping into this one. And I'll double check that. I just want to make sure that they, that is the same lineup. And it is, so uh, that's the same lineup that they have listed there. So uh, moving one player over, and that's always a little tricky to do. When you start moving lines around a little bit in the finals, I guess considering the way things wound up last night, probably not a bad idea. Right, it's maybe. usually an availability issue. That you don't have people who can play left wing, so you got to put people on different sides and with different people and whatever. Right. Offsides there. Sorry to interrupt you there, Biggs. No, I was just going to say, like, actually, I don't remember what I was going to say. It was something along <laughs> the line. <Nah. laughs> Another offside there. For a line that's been together since last year's Calder Cup Championship, these three, they should know how these guys move on the ice by now. Well, yeah, they, I mean, these are some guys who are holdovers from last season's team, and, uh, I think that experience of being in the finals is invaluable. Oh, no, absolutely. It's clearly shown it right now, being up one nothing at the end of the first, practically. Last seconds winding down as good quick shot on net by, um, I think that was uh, Louis there. Nothing going, but it is a one nothing lead right now for the Manitoba Moose in this game number three. The goal coming from Brian at 5.48 in the first period, putting Manitoba up one nothing. Good quick snapshot. And Brian adores Liz, down. puts him on. It came from a broken down play too. That's the, that's the best part. That's real hockey right there. <laughs> Defensively, I think Checker, whatever defensive pair they have out there, Although this is the Moose's third line, it looks like their strongest breakout pair too. So when we were saying third line and whatnot the other day, uh, we're kind of messing with our own heads because it's probably, you know, first line D pair with another line and then second line D pair with another line. It's it's a mix and match a bit mm -hmm. to strengthen out even lines. Second period getting underway here. Checkers down 2 nothing in this series, down one nothing in this game. Manitoba controls. Shot from the point by Bob. Blocked now. Bob again with it. Flips it around the other side. 
Brian thought he had it, but could not pick the puck up. And now Charlotte in the Manitoba zone. Good quick pass out in front and a nice save off the shot from Alexander. Puck is still loose in the corner and Bob will start out with it. Now Louie. And Charlotte back with it. Almost had a three on two going there. Now there'll be an offside call. We saw Bob and Chanderson in, the, in these playoffs play some really good hockey back there. And Arch, we, we know what he's capable of doing in the playoffs. We saw it last season, and he's had a couple of big saves in this one so far. Yeah, don't they have to go through Dreamy next game? Like, if they can't get through Arch, I don't see them beating Dreamy either. Well, Dreamy, for sure, is uh, is their number one right now, and he's been playing spectacularly. They, they uh, last series, I believe, the last three games, if I'm not mistaken, against San Jose, the Barracuda scored one goal. So, uh, you know, Dreamy is a hell of a goaltender, and if you could have Arch as your number two, that is, uh, you don't get too much of a break. A couple of shots there from the point by Bob. Manitoba using everybody on the ice right now. The one thing about Dreamy, though, is if, if he comes into a game with a joking status, doesn't think there's any chance they'll lose, that's when you, you'll catch him off guard. A lot of chirping by Dreamy in the box, for sure. <laughs> We've seen that this week. He's a very confident young man. But so far, his play has backed it up, and that's the scary part of it. Moose controlling again. Sessman. Looking to work it in. Holds on. In the corner going deep is Bob. He can't control it. Clearing pass not good enough. A shot. Dangerous one on net there by Louie. But pushed aside by GOA. And now back the other way is Charlotte. Good quick pass in front. Good kick save by Arch. So far his positioning in this game has been solid. Arch can get a little left right moving you know, a little bit too much at times, but he's been pretty quiet in net. I was asked to uh, let you know that Lewis is playing center and Brian's playing right wing. Okay. So they switch. And our right, yeah. Okay. And our right, these uh, kill us sound. That, see, I didn't see that change on the, on, the, on the site. So my bad for not seeing that. I did check it one more time. Right, yeah, you're right. Kill us sound is in there. Sorry about that, folks. We swear to God, we're veterans with this. <laughs> now Charlotte, again, trying to work it here. Really not able to get much offensively going from time to time. A couple of plays, but a good, quick opportunity in front. And a wide open rebound left in front. And unfortunately, too easy of a goal for Brian. As he gets his second goal of the game here. And now a 2 nothing Moose lead. I'm not gonna lie, if I was at left wing, I'd be kind of triggered not being able to finish that myself. <laughs> Surprised the goalie didn't dive at that puck. Brian Adores lives with the second goal of the game at 1450 to make it 2 nothing, and the Moose are on the attack again. Are they on a constant power play? <laughs> the scoreboard doesn't say that, but it almost feels like it. Wrap around attempt, not there, held on by Arch. Puck control by Manitoba. Approaching the two minute mark here in the second period. Shot, broken stick play, and a good opportunity there for Charlotte. But Arch again, right in position to make the save. Those, wow. Those change-ups on broken, broken stick shots can really mess you up in goal. Good poke check there. But a nice play by Sessman to keep it alive. And now finally Charlotte able to get it out. Brian controlling. Looking for Sessman in front. Can't find him. 
One more opportunity for Charlotte again. Good pass save by Arch. And that ends the second with the Moose up 2-0 in this one. Unfortunately, can't get you the shots on goal just yet, but uh, I'm assuming that and time on attack is well in hand for Manitoba. I mean, the checkers got to do something here. This is their next game. You can't you can't rely on win their next game. This is the game they needed to. If they don't shake this third period up. It's a lot of pressure and things not looking in their favor for next game. Very true, Big, but it's also still very possible. I mean, it is just a two-goal deficit, but, yeah, they got to dig in deep because what we're seeing right now, I don't see it. Oh, as that happened. Good quick two-on-one break, but good defense there by Killa to be able to break up the play and Arch finishing it off, just keeping the puck out of the net. They haven't been shy of... Uh, opportunities, so they have still had their opportunities in this game. Puck finally controlled there by Louis. Now Charlotte controlling, coming back the other way. No frills. Tries to play it out front. Arch teleports about 10 feet <laughs> away from the crease, but gets back in time to cover it up. Still some glitches in this game, eh, boys? Wouldn't, wouldn't be an NHL without him. <laughs> and Manitoba, good opportunity there. Dominator able to help out and knock the puck away. Now, again, good recover by Charlotte to come back and help out defensively. And now, back again, Sessman, quick shot on that. Saved by GOA and clear to the right side. Now Charlotte working it out. Back in the checker mm -hmm. zone. Wrapping it around the board. That was, a, that was an odd play to do. And it set up a beautiful opportunity for Manitoba. And that's, Sessman. That's reading your opponent right there. That looked like Sessman who wow. finished it off. Yep. The gift. You can see the desperation in Charlotte, man. You have forward above the red line at center ice. That's ridiculous. Sessman from Bryan at 554 in their arch. Another save. And you can see some frustration, I think, now by Charlotte. That play to try and clear the puck around the boards when there was nobody on you, that I won't understand. I wish I could explain it, but it's not Dude, in my repertoire. I can really attribute it to. Nat Killer rushes up. I find people just might not even be nerves, but sometimes people are trying to do a hero play and they, they, it's worked before or something, and I don't know, gets red easily. Obviously, it turned out poorly. Moose trying to come back down the ice with it. This will be icing. Approaching the halfway mark of the third period, Manitoba really controlling the play for the most part. A couple of good opportunities for Charlotte. Should have at least one, maybe two on the board at this point, but good defense not allowing second opportunities and Arch making some great saves early in this game have kept them off the board. Another good opportunity there for Sessman and GOA there. Anticipation was key to making that save. Checkers back, move it in, kicks it in by no frills. Killer trying to find him there. Now a pass out in front. Just could not get a shot off. And now good pass in front there for Sessman, but he was not able to hold on. Nice check into the corner. Works it out front. Manitoba not able to keep it in, but the hustle by the Moose right now is a key factor. Now an opportunity for Charlotte. Good block there by Killer. Fought for behind the net. Now Bob works it out. Gets it out of the zone. A good hit there by Brian. They are out skating them, but they're also hitting them in a, in a timely manner and knocking 
Charlotte players off the puck at the right time. Who's the right D for the checkers? I believe it's Boston Rules. I've heard good things about this guy, but he's been not been playing good right now. And, and as a defenseman, I mean, you know as well as anybody, sometimes when things aren't going your way, you try and do more. You try and, you know, uh, jump up in the offense if you can. You try and, and, and make more of the defensive plays on your own. Sometimes you're ov all over the ice too much. Maybe that's some oh, of yeah. what's happening. Yeah, he probably takes, he wants to take on a lot of the pressure himself, knowing that he's one of the better players. Backhand opportunity there, and finally, Charlotte able to get themselves on the board. And I believe that might have been no frills. We'll check that again, but Charlotte getting themselves on the board now. 3-1 game. Unfortunately, it's under a minute left to go in this one. Charlotte needs a lot of scoring and quickly, and they seem to be on a bit of an attack here. Another opportunity in front, broken up again by Killa, and he gets a stick in the face and now an untimely penalty against Charlotte. And Manitoba can take advantage of this. I'd go for the dagger and try to score one real quick if I was the moose. And now overplaying on this play, finds Brian wide open. Louis all of a sudden had himself plenty of room and Brian caught up with him and got a beautiful pass and put it home. And that is your quick goal you're talking about. <laughs> I see the future. <laughs> you can come with me to the pro, seat, the pro line booth next week. Sounds good. Brian with the goal. I know Louie had one of the assists on that at 19.25, making it 4-1. to one. And Manitoba now on the crest of winning their third game and taking a commanding 3-0 lead in the series. And we'll be here for game four as well as this one is winding down the last 20 seconds. Give Charlotte some credit that did attack and did try and play a little harder there, but it was a little too little too late. And then the penalty really sunk them. Most of their chances came from the high slot when, I mean, if the goalie's moving a lot, then yeah, it, can, it makes sense in them taking all their shots from high slot area. But when the goalie's not moving, you have to make that adjustment and get nice and close to him. Which, that's how they got their only goal. What, am I wrong? No. Nope. No, that's, that's absolutely right. I mean, they've had good opportunities. You're absolutely right about that. Last seconds winding down here, and Manitoba up three games to nothing now. And in command of this series, a lot of people were speculating a four or five game win for Manitoba. Now they have an opportunity for a sweep, and I don't hate to say this, but I don't believe we've seen one since <laughs> the Heat <laughs> swept the Bears a couple of seasons back in season four. What was the series last year? Was it last year was uh, year was four one, I believe. Manitoba winning that one, but uh, the Moose on the verge of a repeat, which a repeat of a team in the finals has happened before in season one and two. I believe we we might have uh, seen that. But uh, we haven't seen a back-to-back -back winner yet. You see Brian adores Liz with a hat trick and an assist. Louie with three assists. Sessman with a goal and assist for Manitoba. And Arch, 13 saves in this game. Played a spectacular game. Made a few good, quick rebound saves. And this is the kind of goaltender that we've seen play this way before. If you get this out of Arch and you've got game four with Dreamy, so now at this point, guys, what are we what are we thinking is going to be the opportunity for for Charlotte in Game Four? What are they, you know, what are they going to need to do? They, you know, not bad. Time and attack, five twelve to four twenty one in favor of Manitoba, fifteen to fourteen the shots on goal in favor of Manitoba. So the numbers look relatively close, but didn't quite wind up that way. This has probably been their best game yet, surprisingly. I mean, they, they took it offensively. Defensively, 
I think they choked a bit though. This has been, they started off pretty smooth with the exception of that broken play goal. Uh, but then they fell apart as the game advanced. Uh, really, they're just, they're really, they've screwed themselves because not only do, if they want to even have a chance at, at winning, which is obviously very unlikely, they've put themselves in such a hole where the Moose can play dreamy every single game from now on. Uh, they only have to play their third line one more time, and like, and I'm sure uh, the checkers don't have much left as far as players they can play for power lines. Well, Je I mean, at least we can see like on their time of attack, so on 421 for this game. What was it? The last two games I said there was five minutes, 15 seconds. So, hey, they almost doubled their time on attack. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe the checkers are figuring this uh, Manitoba Moose team out, but. No, I'm just speaking to give him the benefit of the doubt here, but I really don't think they have a chance in the next game, even if skills he's in it. Jack, what have you, you – what was your impression of this game? Is this uh, pretty much the type of game you guys wanted to play against them? I mean, any game where we come out with a win is the type of game we want to play against them. But Sure. Uh, I think – I mean – that was, by of the three games, no doubt about it, that was the best game they played. And I don't know <clears throat> how much of that is was the matchup itself or just the way, you know, their line or just the way they played. But, uh, of you know, they had – if all the scoring chances they had in that game was more than all they had the first two games combined. And, uh, right. I don't know if you agree with that, but, like, there was a couple times where Arch made saves in this game three where – Easily, they could have been goals. And then the first two games, I don't think anything should have been a goal at all. They should have gotten shut out the first two, in my opinion. Maybe Actually, no, the first, the game, the goal in game one, one. was like at the end. Kind of, <laughs> they were kind of complacent with the whatever five goal lead they had. But I, that was the best effort the checkers had. If I recall correctly, though, I'm pretty sure that the first goal scored in game two was a fairly nice play. They've only scored what, <laughs> one goal per game. Like they have, they haven't really made any, any like very obvious like attempts for goals. But when they do, it just seems to connect. And it's just so rare, though, that they're scoring one goal a game now. That's what they are. That's another one goal game. They're averaging a goal a game. It's it's not very good for a, a Calder Cup final. Jack, are you are you surprised uh, about how much you guys have dominated in this one? Is it a, a, a total surprise? Did you expect a little more uh, uh, of a, a tougher battle in this one? Uh, I don't think surprise. I I don't want to say surprise because sure. you know we knew what our team was capable of. Mm -hmm. So like we knew. I mean, I said before the series started that I think if we play our best game. They're not going to beat us. It right. doesn't matter if they play the best they've ever played. And I think that's happened. Like, we're playing very well. And they're going to need to show up, and we're going to need to make mistakes for them to win, especially at this point. And the lineup uh, that you guys have going for the second game in this matchup, I know Chanderson was originally going to be on defense in this game. In the game number three, he is going to go to game number four and start in that one. And, and again, uh, uh, another guy who's played uh, solid defense and uh, kill a sound, uh, a late substitution in this one to play on D. But it didn't make a difference. Your 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 squad played great D um, and, uh, and Louie in the middle uh, as a center uh, came back, played well, helped out on defense again. Solid, uh, solid defensive strategy up and down, and now you got Chanderson able to go game four. Yeah, I know. Uh, Jim messaged me before the game, and kind of had this plan based on who they were throwing out, and just said they're going to do the, you know, roster swap based on whoever they put out in each lineup. Right. And I thought they gave us the best chance to win. And so far, I mean, one of them is right. I got one game to go. And if, if uh, according to AH and Vibes, so the uh, 
Lobo and Nazi lines, the clear number one line. So Skillsy should have no chance against him, right? You're not taking any offense to the fact that he called out the number one <laughs> line, do you? <laughs> See, it's the it's the clear number. Like, clear no number one. Question. If there's you. like a little, maybe number one, I'm like, yeah, I agree. They, I think they're better, but the clear number one hurts a little bit. Like, give me a little bit of heyday. <laughs> well, let me get uh, let me get a little more of a of an opinion from Biggie and Zeus. Uh, now you know, obviously, you've only. Uh, you know, you guys have been on for and have been watching some of these games, and um, you know, obviously, you got to see uh, a pretty solid line, one that has played together before for Manitoba. But uh, just the way this game looked, very kind of an in between between games one and two, not overly um, dominating, but dominating enough and in control of the game enough. Um, from the kind of play we saw, and, and we're going to see different lineup now, obviously, on both sides. But, uh, you know, the, the lack of being able to control uh, any kind of offensive presence by Charlotte and, and the way Manitoba's playing defensively, what, you know, we'll start with you, Biggs. What, what do you do differently to try and break that up? Um, I don't think Manitoba is – they've been playing well defensively, but – it's one of those teams that most of their defense just for, comes from the lack of having to play defense. They're just so controlling in the offensive zone that they're, they're not challenged defensively. And I think the, the the checkers have the ability to, you know, force the moose to have to play uh, a more defensive style game if they can just produce more goals. They've scored one goal in every game. If, if, if the checkers can score two, three goals, the moose might – not be playing as aggressive or might not be playing as loose as they are. The checkers have really got to shock the moose coming out in this game for, I mean, you got, it's, it's an all or nothing game. You got to throw everything at them. And uh, Zeus, from what you've seen so far, what, uh, you know, what can they do differently? What, what's, uh, what's, what could be the game plan for Charlotte in this one coming up? Um, so, I mean, they can, they can, they have two choices, right? They can go out there and make a statement and show that, hey, we're not shitters and we're good and we belong here by winning this game, but not just by winning it, but by beating them by like, you know, two, three, four, five goals and basically punching Dreamy in the mouth, right? That's option <laughs> one. They could do that. Sure. It's possible. skillsy has got some thumbs. I've seen him play before. You know, he's, he, he could probably do this, however unlikely. Then there's option two, okay? Option two is prepare for next season. Figure out who you're going to resign if you're coming back as management okay. and just move on. One of those two choices you have, you can either take this win and then try to make it a you know, reverse sweep, or you can take the L and just move on and say GG's after it's all over. So uh, it doesn't seem like anybody's giving Charlotte <laughs> much of an opportunity here. I mean, would you, after what you've seen in the first three games, would you give them a reliable chance to beat Dreamy of all goalies who has an 85%, I'm sorry, no, an 88% save percentage in the playoffs with the goals allowed of 1.29? Would you give Charlotte a chance with that realistic, like, there's no way? No. Uh, keep it, not, not just Dreamy, you're going up against the one line that made you look the absolute biggest fools on the ice. So that, that as well, yeah. It's hard to not have hyperbole about this only because of the games that we've seen so far. And, and I, like I said last night, I think I said it to you guys before we got on air here, you know, uh, I really expected the checkers to at least steal one, you know, at least maybe in the first couple of games, first two, three games, uh, bounce back and, and take one of these games and, you know, maybe be down 3-1 after four. And, you know, look, it's still possible in this game. You've got a good line with Skillsy and and uh, Snipe and Corbs, as far as we know right now. That's the, the starting lineup. Um, but, you know, the, just the, the play that we've seen so far and the, the struggle that Charlotte has had to get – Anything offensively going has been incredibly tough to watch. And, uh, you know, Manitoba, we, you know, we, there's certainly, we talk about the lines, but the offensive lines, but 
Jack, uh, um, I think Jack may have jumped away here, but I, I think um, I think one of the things that maybe we didn't talk enough about before the series started is the defense, and they have played incredibly well. We've talked about Dreamy, but, you know, uh, it, he's played most of the games in net, but when you can get a game out of Arch like you just got, and, and the way their defense has played all season long, and now in the playoffs they've gotten even tougher – uh, I, I think that may have gone unnoticed, and now Charlotte's understanding just how tough it is because of how good Manitoba plays a, a team defense. Absolutely. I mean, I gave I my prediction like on the website was you know Manitoba in five because I always expect the third line to lose to the team's first line because I expect management to do line matching. Um, however, Manitoba bested them very handedly in that last game. So now it's out the window. My, I'm changing my prediction to Manitoba in four at this point. I hope to see uh, an upset here. If there's any line the Moose ha or the Checkers have to, to upset, it's this line, Dreamy. Uh, game four, you know, this is, this is all their glory. I mean, they're probably accepting defeat at this point, but this win could be huge for them. Well, the first three games uh, obviously have gone to Manitoba. And uh, this past game, you know, a, a slow, steady attack, uh, not taking big chances by the Moose, you know, just just moving the puck really well. And, again, uh, you know, we, we all talk about this from time to time. And, you know, we see too many teams trying to dangle their way into an offensive zone. We see guys trying to do it by themselves. We saw a lot of good, quick moving the puck around, using the point, using the defenseman, which I know Biggs, I'm, I'm, you know, would love to see that happen every game he plays, uh, and and able to you know inc include everyone in the offense. And when you do that, that that really stretches out the defense. And Manitoba did that. They didn't mess around with the puck too much. They were able to uh, find passing lanes pretty easily. And, and, and again, I think that goes to, you know, a good team concept, but it also goes to at least the forward line who knows how to play with each other really well. And now you've got, you know, defensive partners who are also understand where they fit in with that line. And these guys just played a good team uh, game. No better way to say that, just the way they passed and, and, and the way they kept the puck moving, kept the puck in the zone. Um, not trying to do anything fancy with the puck, but just trying to get good opportunities and shots on net. Uh, you know, 15 shots is not a lot. I really thought we were going to see a little more in the end when it came to uh, to showing the final stats, but they got good quality shots on net, and they, you know, they made God of America move around, and uh, they just got good solid opportunities. Uh, I, I thought maybe not a flashy game, but a really well sound played game by Manitoba all around. I mean, if that's Manitoba's so-called third line, like you're, you know, you're in, you were in trouble from the start. They they have depth. Those guys are all like we said. They all have experience coming back from the last Calder Cup. That entire line and. And they're they came out playing a solid game. There's no there's no spectacular players on that line that stand out to me. But they play some smooth hockey, some reliable hockey, and like you said, they move the puck really well. And they didn't really show the checkers uh, the option to really take control of that game. And as a as a manager, if you're looking at the way your team is performing so far. If you're if you're JMM and Nazi and you're looking at at the way things are going, I gotta believe this has gone pretty much the way they expected it, Zeus. I, I you know, it seems like maybe their plan has has happened you know to to order exactly the way they wanted. I would say that I'd have to agree with you on that. Only because I mean you can't – I just really have no words for, for Charlie right now. I mean, just – I don't want to say it's poor management because you couldn't put lines together correctly or 
you couldn't match the moose you know their, their team is just too damn good to be completely honest like if they could take out the cuda in what what was it five games mm-hmm. yeah, five games. i'm sorry it's just you don't got a chance man the the team's stacks from top to bottom you have lobo dangles who wasn't he a free contract this year because they finally allowed him to do management yeah, they um, did. Yeah, yeah, they finally let him do management, and because of that, he, for whatever reason, had one of the low. He had the lowest point production of any season he's ever played, but this man still has 446 points in you know all games AHL. So the guy's a, a stay. You know, he, he ain't going nowhere. But you got to play that right now, and pray. Just pray to EA and hope to God that the other team gets. AIDS, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But aside from that, I mean, I can't imagine what else. I can't imagine what else they could have done. I mean, seriously, uh, you know, having the advantage in games three and four to come back and set it up pretty much the way you wanted to. Um, I, you know, again, they're, they're trying hard to match up what they think is the best opportunity for them. Um, and, it, you know, again, it is – I think it's about a matter of being overmatched and they're trying their damnedest to to stay with them. And, and really, you know, in that game, numbers-wise, they did. They had their opportunities. Could have been a two-one goal game, uh, providing, uh, you know, a penalty late in the game maybe. A couple of opportunities that Arch stopped them on where, you know, they had good second-chance opportunities where Arch made a good save. Uh, again, the, you know, when you, when you step in it, uh, sometimes you step in it really well and everything goes your way. And, uh, again, even though they had good opportunities here and there, uh, the checkers just did not get any puck luck or any big enough rebounds where they can get a nice wide angle shot on arch. And, uh, he was able to make some good saves and keep them in this. And, um, Charlotte, you know, again, first period, second period, how quickly can you get something going offensively and show that you uh, are going to play with them during a game. I think when you're not able to score until the third period, that winds up being a problem. You know, you, you go two periods plus without uh, any, any scores up on the board. They've kind of had that happen to them, um, you know, uh, for, not not the last two games they've scored relatively early, but couldn't hold on to it. But you come into game three and you're not able to put anything up on the board uh, for two periods, and all, and you're down two nothing going into the third. And you saw what happened the first two games. I gotta feel like that's you know, Biggie. I gotta I gotta feel like that's gotta really weigh on the shoulders of of the guys who played in this game and and uh, and say you know whew, you know the guys who went before us had it tough in those games and we're not catching any breaks in our game tonight. What do we got to do to score a goal? And I think it kind of showed in their play when they finally did get on the board, they played a lot better for the rest of that third period. But um, again, too little, too late for them. The problem too is, especially as we're getting further into the series, you're feeling not just the weight of the current game you're playing, but you're feeling the weight of this. So you're down two nothing. Now you're down three, nothing, you know, we talked about last game about uh, uh, the one of their good demons was at Boston who who played solid most of the game and then towards the end when they started to get desperate he started to make mistakes because he started to try to take the game on his own shoulders. Right. Well, you're gonna you might see that in this next game too, where players like maybe Skillsy might make mistakes that they shouldn't make when they're loose and in just a casual game, but he's fe- he's gonna feel the pressure of down three nothing. And as the periods go on, he's not going to just feel that pressure, but he's going to feel the pressure of the periods and how little time they have left. So the the checkers are under the most pressure they could ask at any point in these playoffs right now. I mean, it's it's all – it's what's going through their heads now too is people are going to make fun of us. We got swept in the finals or – or, you know, any individual could be thinking different things. So hopefully they don't let all that stuff get to their heads. It's bad enough that they're outmatched in this game and outclassed, but they're going to need 100% focus and hope that the Moose doesn't necessarily bring their A game while the Checkers can bring their A game. 
Well, we're about uh, 15 minutes or so away from the start of the next game. Kind of wish they would start it sooner, but uh, they're allowed to to wait. So we'll, we're going to have to wait here with them. Looking to, uh, well, we do have Dead Soul on with us now, who is the uh, the uh, owner of this team and uh, up in the NHL with uh, Winnipeg, I believe. Correct, Dead Soul? Yep, that's right. So watching these games and, and uh, you know, you obviously have a history with the Moose and owned the uh, Moose last season when they won a cup. Uh, how do you, you know, hate to put you on the spot here, but how do you compare the two teams, last season's Moose and season six? Oh, they're completely different teams entirely from top to bottom. Um, you know, they... This team is a team I've always strived to make and try to have every season. The uh, the team chat, if you were in there and you saw it, is just lit with everybody just very very supportive of one another. There's there's no real uh, drama going on. Everything is just you know as smooth as can be. It's it's the best I've ever probably seen in the you know six seasons I've been in it. And you know these guys have just such a great core group of players that are not only skilled but also just good people good players and it shows like throughout and i mean vibes you know we all know vibes and his style and the kind of people he uh you know will try and get in bidding and whatnot and and of course team cancer did you know win last season which uh, <laughs> was amazing we all know uh i mean he has stories to tell i'm sure and we all know how a lot of those players can be but uh you know you can win championships with that kind of style of team, but will people have fun doing that? Well, maybe a few people will. But I can tell you this one thing for sure is that this Moose squad uh, is having the time, just like the best time uh, for sure. Just They've all just been great with each other. What, um, what do you think so far of this series? Three games, your guys seemingly are in control. Is this pretty much what... Uh... JM and, and Nazi said that they were planning on due for the series? Oh, you bet. They they had no uh, no doubts in their minds about anything. I mean, they didn't take them lightly whatsoever. You know, there's always reminders, uh, you know, to just check everybody's head, you know, stay in check and just remember that this game can go any which way, especially, you know, like the mental part of it. Um, and ultimately, everybody's just in the right headspace. And I know with having managers like with JMM and, and Nazi at the top of the helm of this, you know, like they, they really know what they're doing. They've had a lot of experience, you know, they obviously came over from uh, what is arguably the easier division and they came to a tougher division and have it been able to create and craft this kind of uh, atmosphere here and, and just, you know, work with what they've got. And it's been, it's been fantastic. So they've been confident all season long and they've done all the right things. They've made all the right moves. I mean, JMM, JMM is a, savant uh, aficionado of, of making trades i've never seen anybody be able to make the trades that he makes that are not only effective and good for the team but just adding depth and quality players and just you know he knows how to to work the uh the trades and um you know part of this team too has been some guys coming back and and playing this season we saw brian and louie and sessman uh playing just this past game um how important do you think it is to have some guys come back who have won before, who have experience in being successful in this league and winning a cup? Uh, do you think that translates in this game and, and means something at this level? I think it does. I mean, it, it definitely helps with uh, when you're in this kind of situation and, and, you know, a lot's on the line and there's a little bit of pressure. I mean, there's been a lot of pressure for these guys. Well, I guess maybe not so much pressure – for them, I know the the Barracuda had a ton of pressure, you know, like that's everybody was expecting them to just win. And the Moose just kind of casually just like, you know what, we're going to do our thing, play our game. And I mean, it, it does help when you've actually been there before uh, for guys like Brian and Arch and, and Killa and Pez and all of them that have been, uh, you know, they've actually all been up and down at one point. They've been in the NHL and the AHL. So to have the experience of being up in the NHL for a while for a season, uh, or at least half a season for most of them, and then come back and play uh, down there and win the cup and then be here again. I mean, it, it's it's enormous to have that kind of experience when you have guys that know, you know, just what it's like and how to play as a team and just be able to play the style of hockey that they're actually playing. It's it's invaluable. I'm assuming the, the style, I mean, obviously, Vibes did a heck of a job keeping that, 
keeping that uh, bus rolling. Um, and as, as parts were flying off it, crossing the finish line, he still was able to, to work it where, you know, the Moose were able to win last season. But I, I got to believe it's a little less stressful to, uh, <laughs> to, to not have to deal with what you said, uh, uh, team cancer. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, 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 I am way too old and it's a reference. Maybe a lot of guys won't get, but, you know, I, I, I kind of remember the 78 Yankees with Reggie Jackson and Billy Martin and Thurman Munson and the fights and the arguments those guys got in and they still won a world series. So I kind of see them as a very similar team in that way, a lot of talent, but a lot of, uh, a lot of infighting and, uh, somehow they still wound up winning this this kind of is more what you what you as an owner would probably want to see in a team. This is 100% what I've always wanted to see in, in a team throughout the organization. Unfortunately, I haven't had this kind of success with my uh, my NHL experience thus far. And, you know, it it's a learning experience. Every season is different. And, you know, I got to say it starts, you know, with the management. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to make a mistake, you know, here and there. And you, you just got to be – you got to know the, the guys that you're getting in with to be able to do this. And these guys have been working together for a while. And I knew coming in that they'd be a good fit here and I could trust them. And they've, I got to say, you know, they've been amazing. They've been super helpful for me. Um, you know, Vibes was great for me as well. Uh, he was always there and, and helping me when I needed it. I just wish I didn't have to have as much help in terms of like ECUs as much as we have in the last two seasons. But when it comes down to when problems go, when problems come up and things don't go your way, to have guys like Nazi and uh, JMM be able to just step up and always be ready. Like these guys put up with a lot of crap for me this season. I, unfortunately, you know, it was like that, you know, they, they saw the worst of me and they, they were just great. You know, like they were really supportive. They, they were always there to help. They always did everything. If I needed to call somebody up, you know, I was doing that. And if I had to send somebody down, I did that. Uh, so, I mean, to have that kind of, awesome kind of management experience to have everybody kind of work harmoniously. There were some hiccups here and there, you know, it just happens. But uh, ultimately, yeah, it was just, it's so much easier when it's, when you have people, level-headed guys managing with you that are willing to work with you, not against you or for themselves. So right. it's, it starts with that. We were talking about that today in our discord discord server, oddly enough about, uh, how like we would just all get along so well and blah 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 and i said that if i'm on the show i'm going to talk about the one fight that happened and then you brought this up and i was like what a perfect segue to me talking about the one argument that happened because i think it was hilarious and it was oddly it was the first week that uh once we got uh 98 and we didn't get jared yet and we played against the cuda and it was a good game. We wound up losing in overtime, but the whole game, 90 was just complaining because the center didn't join the party, so we didn't know what he was doing ever, the entire game. So he just kept saying that, and then Dreamy, the end Dreamy, and it was 90's, like, second game with the team, Dreamy just, like, pops off at him, like, well, who are you to yell at your teammate? Blah, 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 like, freaking out. It was a whole big thing. 90's messaging me, telling me he's not playing with this team, and I'm like, relax. Dreamy is a hothead, hot or Dreamy is like I'm not playing if this guy's on the team. I'm like, relax, you're a hothead. <laughs> oh, it was so funny. But then, I mean, one more game went by, and then they're like, oh, this guy's pretty good. And then we got Jared, and then smooth sailing. And I'm sure there's other things that happened that I wasn't aware of, but it's well, not any. Minor, minor things. I mean, things like that always pop up. There's always going to be people at, at one point or another having a little bit of a hothead situation and it depends on how everybody kind of deals with it every season almost like you're guaranteed to have it and it, it, it just varies in in like the level of it but uh aside from that hiccup obviously it seems like you know from what i've been able to see in your in your discord chat it's been pretty harmonious and uh you know if there is any kind of little little bit of things here and there they're quickly resolved let me throw this at Biggs and and uh, Zeus. We'll start with uh, uh, Biggs first. What uh, you're up three nothing. So how do you how do you not relax too much and let a game or two slip by you? Uh, well, 
seeing as it's the not, uh, Nazi JMM and uh, Lobo line, I just I would just keep telling ourselves, this is game one. Play the same way we played in game one. This is game one. Like you don't need to look at it being three nothing. You're loose. You don't need to be too loose. Mm-hmm. It's still the it's still the it's still the finals. You you're out to play your game. It's any other game, but it means a lot. And just try not to think about the finals until try not to think about that cup until that third uh, third buzzer goes off and you have the winning score. Anything like that being said uh, right now, Dupe, to uh, by uh, JM and and Nazi, has that that been kind of the message for this uh, fourth game? Uh, I probably. They, I mean, they're all in the party together, so it's on themselves at this point. You know, it's not like they're trying to rally the boys and like keep everyone's head level they're worrying about themselves keeping their heads level so but i imagine that's and that's kind of how i went to the series you know like everyone was giving us the series before it started and we went in thinking anything could happen when we took out the cuda so i mean still was that still, mes- I think- was that message made you know you get you guys get done be- beating san jose and obviously everybody from you know, from uh, two minutes after the bidding was over that you know, they were giving San Jose the cup back before the season started. And and obviously you guys and probably every other team in the league <laughs> took that personally. And uh, certainly it's, it's a target on your back if you're San Jose. And you guys responded to that challenge. And, you know, you, you get past a major team like that, but you still have the cup final to play. And... And you know, uh, a lot of us, a lot has been talked about how much better the West is to the East. But I gotta believe you guys. You know, if you if you're a quality team, you don't get too far ahead of yourself. And you know, I'm assuming that was the message from from JM and Nazi to say, hey, you know what? Let's not uh, let's not give ourselves the cup just yet. Yeah, absolutely. It was all uh, we're not done. Four games left. We need four more wins. We're 12. Got 12 out of 16. And that's just been it. One game at a time. Doing what we've done the whole playoffs. It just this time we're heavily favored. And it's, uh, you know, again, you wound up in the same boat that San Jose was with everybody in the league saying, well, clearly these guys beat San Jose. They should knock off Charlotte easily. And uh, you, you have to worry that guys relax a little bit and take a little bit too cocky. And um, I, I was a little concerned about that only because uh, Dreamy in the shout box after the last game in San Jose against San Jose has been relatively nonstop in his confidence uh, and what he's been saying there. And, you know, his play has backed it up for sure. But... You, you know, you, you hope that that doesn't, you know, that it's good to be that exuberant about it, but that you don't get the entire squad thinking, hey, this is going to be a pushover. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think by that point in the playoffs and the season, we're kind of used to Dreamy's antics. All right. Um, and I, I still, I mean, when they made, got Dreamy mad after the, or in the Kuda series, like, I don't know. Dude was playing on another level. It's scary to see. I mean, he was, I don't, he's like, would chirp in the chat box all season long, no matter what. You know, if someone says anything, he's like, who are you to say something? But he then, I don't know, he just played on another level. And people say that all the time. And I've been playing the NHL series in like competitive sixes league since NHL 09. And he, I don't know. I haven't seen a goalie play as consistent the way he's playing in a long time. Like back when it was goalies actually had a say in the game. Like John Law. Hi. Right. I, I see Biggie's trying to cause some trouble in the shot box right now. Oh, boy. <laughs> Biggs is uh, he's hoping for a game five. <laughs> I I know you don't want to see a sweep, bud, but 
I'm sure you won one when you when you beat us uh, a couple of seasons back. So I'm not against the sweep. I'm against the people who are earning the sweep, or some of so the you, people. So you, I was going to say, so you don't like Manitoba? Uh, there's there's some people in Manitoba I don't. Yeah, well, I don't like their I don't like their TC players either. But hey, you, know, you gotta <laughs> get a roster spot sometimes. <laughs> I think he's he's uh, well, it looks like Dreamy's uh. Pretty much uh, telling him, you know, he's yeah. going to win this one. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. well, this is. Hey, look, Dreamy can be on the ice for the championship here. It's uh, totally up to to the guys who are who are there now, and we're going to see how this works out. The uh, Manitoba Moose are getting starting to get ready in the uh, in their locker room. So, we'll uh, we'll either go with Dreamy's feed, or if anyone else happens to provide one from. Uh, from a player's point of view, we will certainly bring that to you. But for now, we at least Please have Dreamies. Oh God. Yeah, we have Dreamies feet for sure. Uh, we, it's possible Skillsy will will put one up there. We're hoping he will. For the love of God, give me a skater's view, please. <laughs> well, we'll see how this works out. But they are going to be playing game two, game four here. Shortly, we're at the uh, start of the game time, so hopefully we will uh, uh, see everybody get together here shortly. Um, everybody in the room for the moose right now, and once uh, they start, once they accept a, a challenge, we'll, we'll get to that right away. Um, I kind of feel like Charlotte needs to, if they're going to have any chance in this one, they need to come out aggressively. Try and try and, and and put some put them on their heels a little bit and make take some chances. At this point, you're down three games to nothing. I think offensively, if you don't do that, you're you're kind of saying we're just laying down for this one. And you know, I, at the point of playing a cautious game kind of out the window at this point, don't you think? Well, absolutely. I mean, they need to control this game. That's the only way they're going to win it. And that's going to be tough to do with the, with the lineup that the Moose are putting out. That last game looked like they just did not, like it just looked like, I don't know if they were trying hard or just giving up, but it didn't look like they were going for a cup win, that's for sure. Or at least trying to, you know, get out of the hole that they're in. So they got to come out swinging and they got to come out hard. And they got to come out just, you know, with a determination, like they're ready and We'll have to see how it's going to go because they've got a pretty big uh, mountain to climb right now. It looks like Jay Layden is going to be in on left D in this game. Now a change has been made. Uh, originally it was uh, Wild in there for uh, on left D for Manitoba, but it looks like now Layden is in the lineup for this game. Him and Chanderson on defense still. Nazi uh, at center. Lob uh, JMM on left wing. Lobo on right. As it, as it's uh, as it has been scheduled. I don't see any changes for uh, Charlotte at this point. Still, Corbs, Skillsy, and Snipe up front. Frost, Wolf, and Boston rules on defense and Flyers and net. And this will be <clears throat> Flyers' first opportunity. Uh, in this game to uh, in this series to show his wares and uh, tough one uh, tough game to come in when you come in on game four and we may have a feed from Layden so we uh, I think we may go to that one now and go with that Let them all have it. give me the link give me the link give me the link, 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 link. <laughs> gotta say uh you know, in terms of game times, I'm glad that we're going back to the uh, the 8:30, or 9:30, 10:30 starts. Oh, is that official? Oh, now? Really? I didn't it's know that. Official. Okay. Rip NHL EC. And we're gonna have uh, laden speed. We'll look at this one for this game uh, four now tonight. And again, this is totally. A chance for Manitoba to sweep this one and take it in four. And we will see how it turns out. This game is about to start now. You see Manitoba in white. The checkers in red at the top of your screen. And we're underway here. JM controlling. 
around the boards. Lobo now back to JM. Finds Nazi in front, but couldn't get a clean shot off on Flyers. And now again, Manitoba controlling. Lobo tries to wrap. Flyers there for it. Lobo gets it back. Some of what we saw in game one from this line, just a lot of domination. Manitoba <laughs> not able to keep it in, and Layden puts it all the way back in his zone now. Starting back out, Lobo. Shot on net. Good save. Good uh, pad save and rebound just not there. Now Charlotte coming back the other way. Boston Rules tries to flip it in, gets his own pass back. Puck is loose and now taken by Lobo. Back the other way. Gets it behind the net. Now comes back onto the left side. Charlotte clears it out. Under the 14 minute mark here in the first period. No score. Game four with the Moose looking to close it out. JM. Of, Go ahead. There's a lot of. Um, that's what I'm looking for. <sighs> Shit. I can't think of that. A lot of well disciplined hockey sticks out there they're poke checking but they're not doing it like spamming it you know what i mean right they're 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 doing it once they're getting the puck and they're getting the turnover and then they're moving on face off just outside of the charlotte zone puck is loose and now coming back the other way corbs flips it in manitoba tries to start out with it they can't get total control snipe gets it in front Good opportunity there for Skillsy to try and find somebody, but he couldn't. Corbs again controls. And JM comes back out. Good defensive play by Layden to knock it off his stick. Flip shot just over the net. Good play by Lobo to try and get a quick one on net. Just over the crossbar. And now Puck being fought for and controlled by Manitoba again. Nazi gets it back to the point. Shot is blocked off of Layden's stick. Puck is loose and now flipped out by Charlotte. Will not be an icing in an open net. Dreamy wow. went out for it. Really dangerous play and just not a good chance there to try and do something with it. He went out sliding for it. I don't understand that play at all. Can I can I be the first to say nice shout out, Dreamy? <laughs> okay. He's nervous, boys. Also, when I mentioned earlier him being too calm. But we'll see what the Lobo line has to say about it. Still finding the puck. Now back the other way as Charlotte tries to control. Looking for another opportunity here. Corbs gets it knocked off his stick by JM and he flips it out. Icing call, 5.08 left to go in the first, and Charlotte. And uh, they did take the lead 1-0 in game two last night, but it's the only lead they've had other than this game now. 1-0 Charlotte here. Good quick slap shot. Snipe trying to catch Dreamy sleeping. He was off the post, but couldn't get a good shot off. Play in Charlotte zone. They control Frost. Boston flips it up to Corbs. He's got some room. Some players can't get a good shot off. Nice play coming back is Nazi. And now Lobo. JM. Looking to make a play. Flips a pass out to Lobo. How he found him with two defenders in front of him, I'll never know. But that one... Just did not work into a good offensive opportunity. Now back the other way is JM. 20 seconds left to go in this first period. Lobo controlling, trying to find someone in front. Good play there by, look like Boston rules, and he's able to flip it out in this first period. Almost over. It's an icing. Point eight left to go. Charlotte with a goal by Skillsy in this first period off of a really a poor play by Dreamy in net coming out for a puck when he really 
Probably should have stayed tight. Gave up a really good golden opportunity for Charlotte, and they have the lead. See if Ma um, the Moose can get a quick shot off. Probably not. And so this period's over. I think besides the goal, the the, the defensive play uh, by Charlotte and keeping this line off the scoreboard uh, in the first period, good news for Charlotte at this point. Yeah, but one thing I'm just losing you there, but how about now? Is that good? There you go. All right. One thing I'm disappointed in is that I'm not seeing any between the leg passes or spinoramas. Where's where's the finesse? Where's the <laughs> flair? This isn't <laughs> hockey. Come on now. This is E AIDS. In that game one versus this Lobo line, you saw a lot of Lobo and JMM stepping in the middle to make plays or to take shots. You haven't seen Charlotte let them do that this time around. They're keeping them to the outside, which might be the difference so far. You're absolutely right. I think we've also seen a lot of passes being intercepted right in the slot from Charlotte. So, yeah, they are definitely playing it cautious and clogging up that middle when it looks like Manitoba has some good control in the offensive zone. Now Nazi to Lobo. Being hounded by Frost. Gets in front of the net. Puck is loose. Unfortunately, Nazi couldn't get a good playoff. Good shot from the point. The deflection goes over to JMM, and he puts Manitoba on the board. It's a dirty one, but you got to take it. Now the score tied at one. Manitoba finally getting themselves on the board. And then Lobo picks up a loose puck and waltzes in. Now again, tries to go short side, can't wrap it. Got JM behind the, the net. They're both behind there. Now JM comes out with it. Layden trying to keep it in. He does. And now Charlotte with the steal. Boston Rules gets it out. Nazi controlling. Puck pushed off and now taken the other way by Skelzy. There's your, there's your twist and wrap almost, but no play for Skillsy there. And now Manitoba trying to come back, come back the other way. JM with a good steal deep in the zone, but nice save by Flyers there. And again, coming back again is Corbs. He gets it knocked off his stick. Now Lobo looking for a break, but it'll be a delayed penalty on Manitoba. Oh, that's depressing. He stepped up and hit him really hard. That's what the interference call was. Chanderson's uh, off on this one now. And so it'll be up to the uh, forward line to help out defensively. Puck on net there. Flyers knocks it away, but right to Lobo. Behind the net now, JM. Trying to work something there. Killing clock, though, at least. And now the power play under a minute. Puck by Boston flipped in. Didn't go anywhere, but still winds up behind the net for Skillsy. He's looking to work it back around to the point to Boston. Shot and a tip on that play by Corbs. Nice setup to try and slap pass at the Corbs, but just not a strong enough shot. And Dreamy was there to make the save. Puck flipped in. Almost cleared out, but Skillsy to Chanderson, and he... I'm sorry to uh, Corbs, but not able to get off a quick enough shot, and Dreamy was able to get there. He wasn't ready for that one T. He was positioned on his backhand the whole time. Face off on a shot there by Boston, but not on net. Good play by Snipe to work in a shot, but Dreamy is there to make the save. Nazi on the faceoff, uh, along with Skillsy. Skillsy wins it back, and we are more than halfway through this game at 1-1. Charlotte got on the board first, and now Manitoba comes back in the second on a goal by JM and an offside. 7:04 left to go in the second. Go, Definitely a much better game being played against this front line from Manitoba. And uh, 
I, I don't believe it was the Skillsy line who went against them in game one, if I'm, uh, if I'm correct there. No, it wasn't. So, uh, really putting up their best line against maybe, arguably, the Manitoba best line. Now another penalty against the Moose and Charlotte with another power play opportunity. And a good play. Nice pass out front right in the slot. They find Corbs to put it up there with an assist from Skilzy. And now back on top is Charlotte at 2-1. to one. And Charlotte pressing again. Flipped on net. Dreamy with the save. Big rebound comes out, almost out of the zone, and now back again comes Charlotte. Good play by Snipe to try and keep it in. Lobo on the right side gets it back to Nazi. Now back to the point. Works it back down low to Lobo. He maneuvers in, and that puck slides in. Great work by Lobo. Didn't get off a good shot, but... Had Flyers moving enough where that puck can still keep sliding. And Lobo tying this game up at two. And Charlotte back in now. Under two minutes left to go. Second period. Good stick check by Lobo. Trying to get JM breaking out. Not going to be an icing though. Up to Corbs. He works it past the defenseman. Good play by Nazi to come back and help out. Tries to get Lobo breaking, but he can't reach him with the pass. Last couple of seconds dwindling off here. And that'll be the end of the second in this game. Tied up at two now. Goals by JM and Lobo for Manitoba in this period. Corbs had the second goal for Charlotte, putting them up 2-1. But Lobo with that game tire here in the second and it is going to be a fight to the finish. Are we going to get a quadruple overtime from these two teams? Are you wishing that on us or are you speculating? Listen, listen I got 13 <laughs> minutes left on my lunch break. I'd rather not. Right. Makes sense. But but it is the checkers. <laughs> the news got to just stay out of the box, you know, be more disciplined and, uh, you know, not give them the chances that they're giving them here. And that's a good point. That's a good point, Dead Soul, because we have not seen them really have have much of a problem with penalties until this game. Good shot by Lobo to try and get a rebound for Nazi, but he was not able to get a stick on it. And as we start the third period, Manitoba gets the first good opportunity. JM moves in. Puck is loose now and kicked out by Charlotte. Skillsy able to poke it out. Now Manitoba trying to work it again. Lobo. Able to get past Corbs, now controlling in the zone. Puck picked up, knocked off, but Frost still able to hold on to it. Gets it out of the zone, now Corbs starts up. It's a lot of dump and chase from both teams, but the Checkers seem to be doing it a lot better than the Moose in this one. You notice, too, that players like Boston are playing much better game with uh, less pressure on their shoulder, better to play with. Yeah, I think for sure we're seeing a better overall game by Charlotte than we did in game one. And this this squad is playing a much better game and uh, and, and doing more of the dump and run, I think, is what they needed in the first game and just wasn't working for them. They're certainly taking advantage of their uh, opportunities there on the power play. Manitoba trying to get this out, finally are able to pass up for Lobo. He stays on side. Puck is still loose. He's still fighting for it. Puck slides past Flyers, and now Charlotte will start out with it. Corbs starts up on the left side. He's off sides. He needs to get back on before Skillsy can shoot it in, but that gets deflected by Lobo. Now Skillsy 
tries to get it going, but Nazi's there. Looks like Manitoba trying to stand them up a little bit more in the blue line. Icing on Charlotte back in their zone for the faceoff as we are reaching the halfway point of the third period. Nazi can't win the faceoff, so Charlotte controls. Flipped in by Boston. Chanderson fighting for it. He gets knocked down, picked up by Corbs, and then Snipe gets a stick on it but can't lead it in. Pass in front by, uh, by Skills. He can't connect. Now Lobo the other way. Lobo still controlling. Finds JM. He's trying to move in with it. And now he's going to get called for a penalty as he gets a stick on Boston. And he'll go off. Charlotte with the power play now. As JMM goes off for that penalty. Charlotte controlling at the point. Frost tries to pass it off to Snipe. And it's intercepted by Nazi. Boston gets it up quickly to Snipe. Good poke check by Lee and he flips it out. Charlotte comes back up again. One minute left on their power play. Flip in front by Snipe. Trying to connect with Corbs, but a good defensive play there by Chanderson. And now Lobo dangles with it. Flip shot on net by Layden. Pushed aside. Now Charlotte back out again. Still 2-2 as we hit the five-minute mark in the third period. Layden tries to throw one up, but it's not connecting with anyone, and it'll be an ice. Face-off fought for. Lobo comes away with it. Lobo taking his time. Flips it in. JM runs after it. Good hustle. He gets a poke check on it. And now comes out with it. Good hustle by JM to make this play happen. Tries to flip it in front of Lobo, but can't connect. Now back the other way. Comes Snipe. He has some room, but good play back by Nazi. Playing defense. Coming back and helping out. And now a penalty is going to get called on Charlotte. Delayed as Manitoba tries to work something here. They can't control it well enough, but there will be a faceoff with one minute left to go in the third. Manitoba. Calling a timeout here and looking to try and regroup and maybe score on the power play. What even was that penalty? Like, did any of, any of you guys see what happened? Was it a trip, interference, someone got the dick? What happened? It looks it looked like a trip. I don't think uh, it was either a trip or a hooking, but it looked like one of those stupid poke and the guy barely stumbles over there. Ah, uh, fuck this game. <laughs> <laughs> this game is the worst. Why do we play it? That's a very good question, and maybe someday we'll try and answer it. But right now, we're in the third period of Game 4, and Manitoba has the power play. Charlotte wins the faceoff. They are looking to clear out, and they do. He's off, he's off. Skills he way offside, but he plays it anyway, and that stops play here, 50.6. And now, good thing for Manitoba is they've got a minute of this power play on a slow clock, so this will, uh, this will be a nice long power play for them. At least this minute, they've got a good amount of time here to make something happen. Nazi controls. Gets it behind the Lobo. Back out to Nazi. And that one almost slides past Flyers, but he's able to hold on. Thirty-four point eight, as you see on the clock. Face off. Won by Charlotte again. Boston trying to clear it out. Finally does. Skillsy's done a good job on faceoffs tonight. And Skillsy's there trying to control, make something happen. Four guys back there for Manitoba. He's still holding on to it. Now almost comes away with it cleanly, but can't do it. Now back the other way, two on two as we get down to the last couple of seconds. Lobo fighting for it, still fighting for it. Nazi tries to get a shot off. That goes wide. Two seconds. 
puck back out in front again. And, oh, no, he's just not able to get a good shot off. And the period ends. Flurry of activity there at the end. That was a scramble. It was like my eggs in the morning. That's that's a bit of a win for uh, the Charlotte, though. I mean, this is... They got to look at this two ways. One, the first fucking OT they've had. Closest chance they just killed basically a full penalty, even though they still have another minute to kill. And for fact, it was probably longer than a typical full penalty so far. And they're doing it. And I mean, they're still applying pressure on the penalty kill. So if they can get out of this, I feel like they might have some momentum. One minute, and they might be able to show some pressure, some win possibilities and not only that they caused manitoba to take their time out while holding their own so that's the important part 30 seconds left to go in the manitoba power play and coming back the other way is corbs fighting for it not really looking to just clear they're looking to maybe move the puck in if they can but now coming back the other way nazi for manitoba flips a backhander on and flyers having some trouble covering it up but finally does he played hungry hungry hippos as a child Always fun as a goaltender when you have to try and cover up three or four times. Another face-off win for Skillsy. Boston rules, trying to move in with it, backhands it in. Skillsy trying to get in there in time, but Chanderson is there. Nazi over to Lobo. Looking to find some place to maneuver with it. Gets it back for Nazi. Back in front for Lobo. Tries to go far side, but it was partially deflected. And now Charlotte back the other way. Good flip on net. Now back to the point for Boston. Can he get one off? That one's deflected by Nazi. And now Moose the other way. Everyone, Both teams are at even strength. 15 left to go in this overtime. Lobo, always dangerous with the puck, as we know. Back for JM. Gets it back for Lobo. Looking to get in front for Nazi. He's not able to get a clear shot off, and Flyers covering up. I wish I could be, uh, who's the lefty for the, uh, the sharp checkers right now? I, I wish if I was Frost, Boston, I'd, I'd be telling Frost to just level Lobo, because he's just been all stick dangles, and he hasn't physically used his body up against Lobos yet and I feel like you'd knock him on his ass a few times before he realized that he couldn't get around you that way good quick wrap around and a shot there by Frost on net no rebound though and so face off deep in the Manitoba zone Nazi able to win that one but Skillsy with a good poke check gets it back behind the net Corbs. Opportunity, but three men in front. That shot is deflected and out of play. How many overtimes did I say earlier? I think four. I was trying not to listen. Shot blocked by JMM and cleared out. We had that. We had that with the uh, Devils and the Checkers in a, in a game uh, last week, and uh, that was uh, painful. To go through four times. It was uh, do or die for one of those teams, wasn't it? Uh, I don't remember if that, if that was a do or die game. I'm not sure. I have to look back at that. But it was uh, it was a long game. You know, this is all going back to the first period. If Jeremy would have just stayed in his net, they would have already had the Calder Cup. Yeah, absolutely. Pass back and Manitoba had won the face off, but could not hold on to it. Puck is dumped in, and now Frost controls. Corbs. He gets hit nicely by Chanderson, knocked off the puck, and he'll come back with it. Looking to control, gets it over to Layden. Nazi. Controlling, tries to find Lobo in front. Good play by Snipe helping out. Now he comes back with it. Skillsy. Poke checked out. And now... Back the other way, Layden gets it up to Lobo. Good quick shot on net, and he finds Nazi on the rebound. And the Manitoba Moose have won this game and have won the Calder Cup. Winner, winner, 
chicken dinner. Very typical play that we see a lot in this game. And Lobo just flipping one on and Nazi there in front to jam it home. That's my signature move. I think it's a lot of players' signature moves. <laughs> I felt like on the rush before that, they could have done the same exact thing and didn't. And then the second time, they're like, well, we should probably should just throw it there. Now, the Manitoba Moose have won this one by a score of 3 2 in one overtime. Good effort by Charlotte in this game. They played well against this line, but Nazi with a pair of goals in this one and uh, able to win this one in overtime for them. As you see, Lobo, a goal and two assists, and he, uh, you know, one of the guys who may be uh, one of the happiest ones, he's able to win a championship finally, uh, was on some good Syracuse teams, but comes over to Manitoba and helps out what winds up being the season six Calder Cup champs, the Manitoba Moose. And early, uh, let's get some reactions from Jack and, and from Dead Soul. Jack, uh, I'm sure you want to go talk to your guys, but this has to feel good winning this one. You you know, you had a good run last season with, with Hershey and, uh, you know, played some great games in those series. But this time, getting all the way there and winning it, it has to feel really good for you right now. Oh, definitely. I mean, that's the goal. You go into every season just hoping to get out of there with the cup, and it feels great to get one, not going to lie. Um, I'll just uh, It's kind of – it's one of those bittersweet things because, I mean, you, with the salary I went for, like, I, I doubt I'll be on a team with these guys again, but I like – like, they're great guys. And, they, you know, it's very cliche. Everyone says that, like, you like the team, but it seems to be – I don't know if it's cliche or it's just, like, those are the teams that do well deep in the playoffs, the teams that have good chemistry and they like each other and they, like, want to win for each other, you know? Absolutely. And so this game, over four games it took Manitoba, and really the, uh, this one, the toughest one for sure, against, uh, you know, two good lines really going up against each other. The outcome probably not a surprise to anybody as far as how close it was the the entire game, this 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 kind of lined up the way we probably figured it would, Biggie. I I don't think uh, I don't think we we're shocked at the quality of uh, play in game number four with such uh, you know quality players on both sides. It it was definitely uh, Charlotte went down with a fight. They didn't go down without a fight, and. Uh... It's just too bad we couldn't see more of that throughout this entire series. I mean, they really only fight in this game. It's the only game that was a one-goal game, and they also took it to OT. They they shouldn't uh, hang their heads too low. They were definitely outclassed in this whole series, and uh, it's unfortunate that they had to lose game four, but they still made it. They're still a conference finalists, or they're still conference winners and uh, uh, Calder Cup finalists, and they should still be proud of that. like to see if we can get Lobo in here. He is in our group here, and uh, hopefully if he's done uh, if he's done celebrating, and we might take him another minute or two to celebrate. But let's let's get your reaction, Dead Soul, to the way this thing has, has turned out. Obviously, we talked a lot between games about how this team was built and what JM and, and Nazi and Lobo did to put it together. And, uh, you know, a lot talked about San Jose all year long and you know maybe that helped Manitoba maybe maybe it helped them to just hide in the weeds and and just take on San Jose when they needed to just get to the playoffs kind of go under the radar and and just be ready for you know for their matchup with San Jose eventually if they got there and you know they met that match and again in the finals just uh, a four game sweep uh, I, you know, I, I, I think you got to be pretty proud of, of how this has all turned out for you. Absolutely. I mean, these guys really worked hard. They all deserve it. Congrats to all of you guys. That's just, just such a huge win to be able to make it this far and, you know, just to just bring it all home. And, you know, it's, it's what you play here for, you know, to, to have camaraderie and fun and a good team and just be able to win and, you know, get that ultimate trophy that you're looking to get as a team. And, you know, for uh, 
for Lobo, I know that's that's a big win for him and and JMM and and Nazi. You know, like they've they've done a really good job over the last few seasons making some good teams and just you know playing lights out, being among the top players in the league. So I mean, it's it's a long road to this, but uh, you know, well deserved, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's just it's really it's really awesome to see to see these guys as a crew win like this because it's just they really did deserve it. And, uh, yeah, I had other stuff I was going to say. I just can't remember now, but it's pretty... Uh, He's yeah. too choked up. <laughs> I've, got, I've got my scotch here already pre-celebrating a little little bit. But, uh, yeah, it's... I don't even know what to say right now at the moment. There's a few things that you mentioned that I, I was going to ha- kind of speak on, but uh, I've already forgotten. Is my man Lobo crying right now? Did I hear that right? What? Are you serious? No, you can't be serious. This man said he's choked up. What else is he? No, doing? he might be. He he I mean he is a good guy. I'm not I wouldn't be shocked if that were the case. I mean it's twenty eighteen. I'm not about to assume his uh, you know, his preferences in the body, but hey, he's choked up, he's crying. <laughs> not and, that kind of choke. And we'll probably have Dreamy in here shortly as well because he uh he is uh, addressing me as well, so I'm hoping we can get uh, some of these other guys in here to talk about this championship. And, uh, you know, we've talked a lot to uh, to Jack and to Dead Soul in this one. Let's see if we can get some of these other guys in here to join us and talk about this uh, this series and how this has wound up. But I... – Oh, it looks like Dreamy showed up. Oh, there's Dreamy. Oh, boy. <clears throat> and um, we, oh, remi- oh, see we, we remind you. Oh, he left. Okay. <laughs> we oh, thought- thank but you know what? I, I recall me. now what I was going to say. You mentioned about, uh, you know, being uh, fired up with the Barracuda and whatnot. And I think it really did help that, you know, the, the whole league, including the Barracuda, just, you know, they, everybody just expected them. You know, the, the expectation was so high, you know, that uh, ultimately, you know, I think, it can it can definitely hurt the nerves a little bit going into the playoffs and and if you don't have the right headspace then uh you know it can be easy to be overconfident and let that get to you not that that was the case specifically but when the uh when the you know the situation happened with the penalty and everything that happened there uh when they filed for that and they almost got that overturned game that just fired up everybody so that was a big turning point well, we've got Dreamy and Nazi and Lobo in here now, and uh, these guys may still be getting set up, but I think I heard Dreamy. Hey, uh, no, I'm here. dude, congratulations on, on the championship. Um, Thank you. But I have to ask about that first goal. Uh, dude, I, I was trying to skate out and pick it up, and I was just going to flip it out, but I got EAD. Yeah, tough, uh, tough play on that one. But otherwise, uh, you know, you certainly had a, a solid game in, in this one. Uh, you didn't necessarily need to stand on your head in the series. Uh, kind of like you had to in San Jose. You had some great games and some shutouts there. But, uh, you know, I think maybe in this series, a great overall team effort on defense, maybe the best one I've seen from your team in, in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, the, like I said on the last show, like the defense is unreal. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, the defense is, is very good. I didn't have to sit on my head, like you said, against San Jose when I did that. But I'm just happy we, uh, we got the win. And let's get uh, let's get a word. We haven't heard from, from Nazi yet. He's a uh, first time on here talking to us about this. So let's, uh, let's talk to you about this. First of all, congratulations on a, a, what, what has been an incredible season for you guys. Talk to us a little bit about about your team in general and how you know how they played this entire playoff series. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, I think we just all came through as a team and we came hard at the right time, and um, we just you know we just battled and uh, and we were, we were there for each other. So it was just it was really good to see. Really happy and um, you know just really proud of everybody. And Lobo, uh, again, congratulations in this game. A goal, uh, two assists in this one as well. You finally get that elusive cup, and we talked about that a little bit yesterday, but now that it's a reality, how does it feel finally winning this one in the AHL? Woo! It's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, it, 
I've, I've, I've been trying, I've been close, I've been close, I've been close, and now to finally get one, it kind of, uh, <clears throat> for lack of what to say right now, silence is everything. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't, I don't think I'm a scrub hunter anymore. There's, we're not a scrub hunter. We, <laughs> we basically <laughs> showed next? everyone through, through silence, basically, that we can probably keep up with everyone. So, you know, we did a great job. Everyone, everyone here did a great job. Let's talk about that last goal. You you came into the zone. Uh, you know, the, it's a it's a play that that certainly is one that we see a lot of and 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 works a good deal if guys are in position. You throw the puck on net, and and Nazi's there is that's you know the chemistry you guys have that almost probably feels like it's you know it's it's commonplace that this happens for you guys. Uh, shake and bake. Shake and bake, man. Shake and bake. <laughs> shake and bake. Shake and bake. We, 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 uh, we've been doing that goal since NHL 12. So, I mean, he, he called it out to me before. He's like, cross right away. I'm fucking flying to the net. So, I mean, yeah, it was, it was, it was such a nice play for us to finish in overtime on that goal. I mean, just how far we come and, you know, everything that's happened. It's just, it, it was, it was a really good thing to see. You guys had to deal with me being an asshole all season. No, <laughs> they would do it all again in a heartbeat. Yeah, well, you know, I think Dude. we're going to have to deal with you one more season there, bud. Yeah, you got one more season. With it. <laughs> there Here's you go. my question, right? So yeah. my question is, like, Lobo, you got your cup. Nazi, you did as well. Are you guys going to stay in the AHL now, or are you going to try to go to the NHL and get that Stanley Cup instead? I think I think we're committed. I mean, um, we're we're gonna do a few more seasons here, and I don't know. We we we've done NHL, and we've seen the, the humans in NHL, and we're just not really interested in being there. I mean, you know, and like we're, we're not the best, right? Like, I mean, so it's not like we're sandbagging the AHL. I mean, we're just trying to put out a good team and a good management crew, and you know, just like you know, promote LG as a community. So, I'll tell you uh, one thing. I wouldn't, uh, Nazi. I'll tell you now. I wouldn't mind taking a shot at it. Yeah. We'll see. We got a couple more years. I'm, I'm thinking of going back to back to back to back to back. So back to back to back. Jesus, that's, that's some lofty go. goals, but you know what? No one's done it, so it's not something. Well, you, you guys are the first ones to win back to back championships in the AHL for on the PSN side. We've had we've had teams. Uh, I think might have been Hartford, uh, who who made the finals twice, but not necessarily. Uh, you know, not necessarily uh, win it. So you guys are the first guys to win this back to back two seasons and um you know we talked a little bit earlier about this and i'm curious to hear uh nazi and and lobo on this you know game three we we saw you know brian and, and sesman play that game and uh and uh, louie in that one these guys were there last season talk to me about what what it meant to maybe have some guys who were there last year who won it who have some experience of understanding what it takes to get that far Hello. I mean, it, it's it's crazy um, how similar it is to almost like um, real hockey. You kind of almost get lost into it. Um, you know, always having like a vet guy almost. Like, I know it's going to sound crazy to say, but in a video game, you know, it, it helps. Like, it gets nervous sometimes playing in these games. Like, not, not to say it's, you know, different or anything. It's just you get nerve-wracking. And some people that have been there before, it does help being there. And, uh, you know, it definitely did help. How many guys are how many guys are still on contract with this team? Uh, I'd say there's about seven, eight, give or take. I mean, we got some RFAs with the new RFA rules, so I mean, we'll see what happens. So we're, I mean, you know, we got a lot of things going on with our our TC, not only our roster, with a lot of good players like still around. So I mean, we're we're, we're coming, we're coming next season, we're coming fucking hard. Guys just, just won, and you're already talking about uh, season seven, and that uh, I think that shows the kind of uh, the kind of desire you guys have to win, and you definitely showed it in, in this series. Uh, I uh, I I don't typically uh, the winning team, uh, the management will will select their MVP, and if it's something that you want to announce tonight, then um, hopefully we can get JM on here shortly, and and he can join us, but. If that's something that you guys want to talk about, we, we can definitely do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, I think it's going to be kind of hard. I, again, four games in this series, but the San Jose series, you know, there quite a few guys who, who were who were heroes in that one who got you to a, a five-game, 
you know, win in that. And, uh, again, a lot of good team effort all around by your club. It might be hard to pick out an MVP. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, it, it is really hard. I think our whole team is the MVP, to be honest. But, um, y- you know, it would be nice to get JM in, in here. But I think we would all agree that we're going to give the fucking MVP to Dreamy because the kid stood on his fucking head in San Jose. <laughs> and that's yeah. what one of this fucking called her. Yeah, for sure. It's... So, I mean, it's undecided. But with saying that, you know, everyone played amazing, especially our defense and especially our goaltending. What are you guys talking about, boys? I'm shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask Biggie. We know that's why you deserve it because we can't <laughs> believe you played like that. Dude, after the like, I mean, after the Rockford series, I was I was just like I was ready, but after the Admiral series, I knew going into the CUDA series is going to be the toughest series we we're going to play. Mm-hmm. Not just because it's the CUDA, but just in general like it's it's a Western Conference Finals. Like you got to play big for that. You know, the Admiral, uh, you know, if you look at that series too, they you know, they played you pretty well. They were not oh, a yeah, pushover. No, no, they're a great team. Wolf and Silky, absolutely. They ran that team amazing. I, if, if, I would like to say if I looked at all the four teams we played, I honestly felt Admirals had – or a better chance to, I think Admirals had, were the stronger team to beat us. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, you know, Kuda, everyone was all jumping on Kuda. Kuda did an amazing job in the regular season. They did fucking unreal. But they lost two top players. That kills your team because that drops. That's a domino effect. That you know, yeah, your third line is affected, but also your first and second lines are affected. Right, and that hurts. So I looked at that Admirals lineup and I looked at that Cuda lineup. And I'm like, you know what? I think that Admirals lineup has a way better forward core, and we're gonna have a tough time with them. So, I mean, props to that team for sure. And. Uh... You know, again, it was, uh, you know, really a total team effort. But, um, you know, your goaltending, you know, got a great game out of Arch in game number three. He made a couple of saves early in that game. A uh, couple of rebound saves that were critical that, that kept uh, Charlotte off the scoreboard uh, early in that one. And then you're able to come back with Dreamy. Again, you know, the goaltending on your team. This is kind of the caliber that you need to get this far and win the championship. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, um, Arch had an amazing game three, and we all just were just blown away after that performance we saw. So, I mean, it was it was just really nice to see, you know. And you know, I think I think you can you can say it's safe to say that our three goalies were just one of the best out there. After Vibe saying, oh, is Arch ever going to play a game again this series? That kind of just pissed me off the other day. Arch is an amazing goalie. Yeah, and again, that's another guy who uh, who had some experience last season with this team and, and played well in the playoffs. And, and when you were able to do that, you know, Dreamy, you know, obviously you're number one. But when you can go to a guy like Arch who has that experience, that, that has to help tremendously as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, when Arch is playing, like, nothing to worry about. Every goalie has their shaky games. Sure. I've had mine. I mean, Sis, I'm sure you've had yours. Oh, yeah. And... <laughs> I have a career of shaky games. <laughs> no, I mean, every goalie does have shaky games. Sure. I mean, I like I said, me and Arch had a couple this season, but we, t- we t- together with um, our TC Nasty, we held it together. And really, um, you know, it's uh... – it, it can be tough to come off the bench uh, and and uh, and play. I certainly, you know, I was behind Moose at Hershey a couple of seasons ago, and you know, you got to be ready to play whenever you, you know whenever you're called on, and you could be moved into a game at the last minute. And um, but it seems like it seems like you guys worked well as a tandem together, and 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 knew your spot on the team. Oh yeah, we did. I mean, I didn't. Oh, I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't really talk to Arch this much this season. It wasn't really uh, in the chat that much, but when I did talk to him, it was just like, we just worked on each other. Like, we just asked each other's questions. Oh my God, I'm getting raped right now, Fortnite, sorry. Um, we would just uh, we would just ask each other questions and stuff, like what we can, what we can do to help each other and what, uh, all that. But no, nah, it's, oh, I'm getting destroyed. Sorry. <laughs> hey, but, hey uh, no. Yeah. 
Nas, we, we we talk about your lines a lot. You know, we talk about talk about your line, and uh, you know, we talked about Brian and Lewis and Sessman. Um, we talk about your offense a lot. I think when when we have talked about your team in the last couple of weeks, but you know, I I think maybe your 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 defense uh, defensive pairings may not get uh, enough publicity and, and enough good credit for how well you guys played against San Jose, and then of course in this series, they they deserve the credit. They yeah, played I, unbelievable. I, I... I mean, that's hockey. I mean, you, it's the goalies and the D never get as credit as they're deserved. So, I mean, um, but I mean, we all know uh, everyone on the moose that what they've done for us and, you know, how they played for us is just unbelievable. I mean, I think that's what we really tried to strive on is just <coughs> defense first. I mean, from, from week one, we were just team defense goals will come. I mean, you look at our season, we didn't pop in 10, 12 goals a game, right? but we always held them to two to one to zero goals against. And that was our mentality coming throughout the whole season. And because we know that's what wins playoffs. Like that's what, that's what gives you championships. Absolutely. So, I mean, for everyone to buy in on that and then also just to see everyone produce on such a high level, it was just, it was awesome. So Moosty, we fucking love you. We do love you. <laughs> yeah, we, we do. do love you. Yeah. I love you. I love yeah. you. Shit <laughs> Yeah, That's, I still love you. But hey, um, I'd like to take a second to just to give a couple of shout outs, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah. Um, start off with our TC at uh, Bart and Blade Winner. You guys just, you know, helped us out throughout the season. A lot for our team. And then uh, going to guys like Jay Ladden and Dr. Nasty and uh, Bertone. I mean, you guys were just, just, just top notch humans and players. Fucking, we love you all. And then all our roster, D and our roster forwards, you know, great season, great job. That West Coast Express line, you guys fucking killed it. You know, um, the Xbox line fucking killed it too. Fucking killed that. Well, X, yeah, West Coast Express, that's the oh, Xbox that's line. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, and then, you know, Bert, Sess, and Lewis, you guys, you know, played your, played your part as well. And it was, it was really good to see. Brian's just such a, a good guy to have on our team and just to be around and, you know, and, you know, his personality really speaks, speaks for itself. And then, you know, um, Lobo, you know, this, this, he's, he's gone through some things in, in his life that, you know, I've, I've known the kid for the past six years and I think, um, this season is, is dedicated to your mom, bud. And we fucking love you. And, you know, and then also I want to give a big shout out to Jay, man. Just, the amount of work he puts into this team. He just joined. And oh, okay, there he is. Yeah, Jared and did? just you know, Damon's here. Oh, Shut up, Lobo. Go ahead, continue. Shut up. <laughs> um, yeah. JMM. How's it going? JMM uh, joining us now, hey. and congratulations on this championship. We've been talking to half your team here so far, but we wanted to get you on to to get your your feelings about how how this all ended up, and and uh, how excited are you to get this cup? Oh, but you know what it takes to win a championship? Teamwork. These are my boys, man. We've been working at this for like, I don't know, four or five seasons now. Yeah. Battling the route behind the scenes, you know. But, I mean, this is the best group of players that I've played with so far in LG. I mean, mm -hmm. skill-wise, they're great. But it's more what happens behind the scenes, you know. The boys team together as a team. That's what happens. Well, and, you know, one of the other ones I want, one of the other questions I want to ask you, and I don't know if you and, and Nazi and Lobo want to take time and think about it, or if you want to uh, announce it here uh, on the show, uh, who your MVP is. If you have it figured out, that's great. If not, you know, you can announce it at some other point. But um, if you want to, if, if you have an idea, or if you want to even mention a couple of candidates, uh, you certainly can do that now if you feel like it. What do you think? Uh, or am I putting you on the spot no. here? <laughs> well, see, I, in my opinion, I don't see no real MVP. Savage. I think every <laughs> single one of our players. Got to pick one at this point. Well, you guys have to pick them now, but uh, it's something you know. Well, look, if you want to talk in general about your team, I think that's already that's already been said by a bunch of guys here uh, tonight already. That uh, it's kind of hard to put a, a finger on one guy. That it's really been a, a mm -hmm. huge team effort. You know, 
Sibs, I got something from uh entry in the NHL. He said CBG's ta- uh, CBJ is taking over, courtesy of him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually after, in a party with him right now. You uh, honestly, like, I don't know. What, what, what do you think, guys? Like, um, I, 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 yeah. I thought we kind of already answered that. I mean, like I was saying, that our whole team is the MVP. But we're going to give the kid Dreamy the fucking Dreamy. MVP. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he's the one that's been whining the most for it. Yeah. We're giving it. I, just, I think <laughs> the kid wants it. Has proved it. Dreamy is different. Honestly. He's different, guy. <laughs> he's different in a good way. I'm an asshole, but I can pump up with the this team. team. You know? Yep. Yeah, that's the thing. Right, Dreamy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm an you, asshole, but I can pump the team up. And, and that's what I like to say about Dreamy is that also, like, you know, he, he's he's a chirper and he let, lets loose and he's in the show box and he's going to defend the team, guys. Shit. But you need that kind of guy on your team. You need that personality. You need that human that's ready to go out there and and say you're gonna you're gonna lose. We're winning. You know, I'm not gonna say it, but he's gonna say it, and we want that. Yeah, right. So I mean, you know, that's, that's 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 a good person to have on your team. You don't want two of them. You only want one. <laughs> only one. Only one. Oh, big only one. So this is official. So this is official. You're giving it to Dreamy. Yeah, yeah it's official. Yeah, All right, you you heard it, folks. The MVP of the playoffs, Manitoba Moose goaltender Dreamy gets it, and Let's go. Uh, and uh, he'll get his award for that a little later on. Uh, next week or two, I'm sure. So, congrats, Dreamy, on being MVP yeah, of the playoffs. I just want that called the next one, name, so I can cup check people. <laughs> You'll get that as well. Hey, J- I, JM, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you get the last word here uh, on on uh, your experience of putting this team together and and how everything ended up. Is uh, is is this uh, feeling even better than you could have pictured it when you were when you were doing bidding back in February or back in uh, what was it? October, November. You know, but it, it is, it is, it is a good experience. Um, it was, it's almost surreal when you do it. You know, you work hard. I mean, we've been working hard here for this season. Yeah, we've worked hard in series for some seasons. I mean, after every series that you play in the playoffs, allows you to learn what to do the next time you're in the playoffs, and sometimes strategy can, can overpower the other team. You know. I mean, yep. sometimes intimidation. I mean, yeah, it, 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 it didn't take us lightly. Past we're it, we're big on overthinking, double thinking, quadruple thinking. You know, we, we just think nonstop on how to get an advantage on a team. So, I mean, we've been yeah. doing that for the past three seasons. And yeah. that's just yeah. – so it's, it's good to you, finally you have – You make a... mistakes in the past that you're going to learn from in the future. you got to always be one step ahead of the other team. Right. That's right. You got to right. know what, what they're going to do. All right, guys. Well, listen. Congratulations on again the call the Cup champion of six uh, season six, the Manitoba Moose, and uh, you know we'll 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 see you in the off season. But uh, congrats on having a great season and beating, you know, beating a lot of great teams, including San Jose in the semis. And you guys certainly deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. I want to say thank you to T Sibs and all of the LG uh, media. You guys, did a job, and we're so yeah. happy to have you back. And he mm-hmm. says your fucking your voice on the commentating is legit. Keep it yeah, up, kid. It is Thanks. legit. We, we love it. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Nazi's right. Thanks for coming back. I've told you like twenty times, bud. But <laughs> you make you make the league better. 100%. Appreciate it. I appreciate Everybody it. Guys. Well, right, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just here. All right, man. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you later. Uh, yeah, later, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Take it easy. That was uh, most of the, or at least half of the uh, team, for. The uh, Manitoba Moose joining us today, and uh, want to wrap it up here with Zeus and Biggie and, and Dead Soul, who are still hanging around here, and we'll uh, we want to try and uh, just uh, get a last uh, view from you guys before we get out of here. I want to start off with Zeus and just say from you know from what you ask you from what you've seen so far in this one, and and you know what you were able to watch with. Uh, with Manitoba and and the way these games played out, uh, what's your overall feel about about how these guys uh, played this series and 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 you know what this team has accomplished? Not it to go first. <laughs> All right, Biggs. You uh, let me ask you that question. You, you know, it's uh, we've got a chance to watch Manitoba uh, for a little while here. And, uh, you know, maybe they did go unnoticed a little bit with uh, 
San Jose in the West and a lot of other good teams in the West. But I think it says a lot to come out of the West uh, and be the champions and beat some really good teams. And Manitoba, you know, uh, just able to find the right combination every series in the playoffs. You can't discredit them. The guys, uh, they worked. They they played well. They played some. They didn't really show very much. Weakness. You could argue that maybe they never got truly challenged, but uh, they just played that way, and it really just made them look like the best team. And they got what they deserved tonight. And I got to congratulate the the whole squad and, and their management for making such a good team this year. And uh, yeah, I'll get uh, I'll get Dead Souls' uh, view here about you know the way things. Uh, finished up here and the way your uh, AHL squad finished up. And now two seasons in a row when, when this has occurred and two very different teams, but yet I, I got to believe in the end, both very satisfying. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's always nice when you can see at least, uh, you know, part of your organization succeeding like that. And, uh, you know, they did a really good job overall, just, you know, getting the right guys in place. Um, you know, I tried to make sure to not uh, intervene much with anything, let them do their thing and not poach anybody. So I know that's that's always helpful. I know I've had it happen to me in seasons, so it's it's not very nice when, uh, you know, that happens. But yeah, you know, they, they had the right mindset going in. They had the right experience. They're the guys that I knew that were going to be good for the job. They've always had really good teams that they've built. Um, I knew them well enough to know that I, I felt I could trust them and that I could, uh, you know, work well with them. And they just... You know, honestly, they didn't really surprise me at all because my expectations were a little higher for them just based on the credentials that they had coming in. And, you know, just seeing how they made everything go throughout the season, just how they did in bidding, how they treated the players, you know, in, in the shout box, or sorry, not the shout box, but in the Discord, Team Discord and whatnot, and just how they ran everything. Just, you know, to me, this is not a surprise. They earned it and they've worked very hard at it for the last several seasons. And this one in particular, you know, they had like all the right ingredients and, and the right attitudes that, uh, that win championships. And I think the ones that make them not just win, but also have fun doing it. So that I can at least be proud of uh, that everybody, at least on the Moose this season, I think had a good time. Any final thoughts from you, from you, Zeus, on what you saw tonight? I am actually currently on a call right now, so uh, <laughs> okay. I'm going to well, have to dip out of this. I'm sorry, boys. Right, it was nah. great to watch and have fun. All right, Zeus, thanks. We'll talk to you later. Zeus uh, helping us out tonight. We'll, we'll – uh, finish up with uh, with what Dead Soul said and go from there. Um, again, finals tonight, 4-1 in Game 3 for Manitoba. And again, in overtime, 3-2 victory for the Moose on a goal in overtime by Nazi, his second of the game. And uh, again, the closest game that we saw uh, in this one so far. And uh, good, good play by... Um, Lobo and then Tanazi and, and the overtime winner, the game winner for Manitoba. Again, uh, the sweep for the Moose in this series and the Manitoba Moose uh, winning their second championship in a row and uh, doing it with um, a very different style from last season, but just as effective and maybe uh, maybe even more so with a, a solid squad up and down. As you heard, Dreamy announced the playoff MVP by their management group. And so uh, well-deserved, especially after the showing uh, with uh, San Jose and how well he played there. And so we congratulate him on the MVP. Well, that's it for us. We're going to wrap it up here. I want to thank Biggie and Zeus and Dead Soul for joining us tonight. Fellas, thanks. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk soon about Season 7, I'm sure. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. It's always a pleasure. Moose. Good, good job, Sibs. All right, guys. Take it easy. We'll talk to you later. Biggie and Dead Soul and Zeus. I'm T. Sibs saying so long. We will talk to you again when it comes time for the draft. Uh, and we'll probably be on live for that. That's uh, February 1st. And then we'll talk to you with a couple of uh, shows, I'm sure, in the AHL to talk about the upcoming bidding and what happened uh, with that and what the rosters look like. So until then, this is T-Sip saying so long. We'll talk to you later. Again, Checkers and the Moose, the finals complete with the Moose and the sweep of a four-game 
straight four games for the Moose, winning their second Calder Cup in a row. Have a good night, everyone.